Hi guys, how is everybody doing? You guys, it's Thursday. The Hi. weekend is almost here. Even Cooper's excited. Did you hear him whining? <laughs> He's not whining about that. He's just whining because that's what he does. That's what he does, right? I'm giving my attention to you and he needs to cry about it. So, you know. Hi Janice, how are you? Guys, I'm going to grab a drink of water real quick before a lot of people show up. There's Penelope. Hi, girl. Mm. Hey, Katie, how are you? I have so much to talk about today. I'm excited. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> what is this? I don't know. That's my excitement. Bursting forth. Hi, Erica. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to everybody. I'm excited. I'm excited. I got a lot of fun things to talk to you guys about today. So I'm going to let everybody kind of come on in first before we get started. And then I'm going to dive right in to everything. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Patty. Oh, gosh, you guys. It's a pretty day outside today. I hope you guys are having good weather wherever you are. Hi, Colleen. Colleen, I've been thinking about you all Morning. Is that weird? I hope that's not weird. I don't mean that in like a creepy way. You've just been on my mind today. So I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're doing okay. I'm sending you a hug. Been on my mind. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Edna. <laughs> it's so good to see everybody. I love it. We have such a great community. We really, really do. So there's Miss Donna. Donna's in the house. The party can start. Janelle is here as well. <laughs> All right, you guys. So let's let's start talking. So everybody who is on YouTube. Okay, first of all, let me rephrase that. YouTube trolls, get ready. I got a lot of talking to do. I'm going to do that first before we do our project, right? But you have the ability to fast forward, <laughs> right? You don't have to hear my chit chat if you don't want to. The rest of us are here for it, whether we want to be or not. So here we go. All right, let's let's talk. So I had a lot of things to talk about before we get started. And I mean that, like I do have a lot of ground to cover. So buckle up and get ready. And then the project mm -hmm. is super easy and fun. I hope you guys like it. I think it's a great one. And I can't wait to see what you guys make with it. So, <clears throat> so first things first. I'm so excited. Next week, you guys, I probably shouldn't start with this, but I'm gonna because it's just so exciting. I can't contain myself, right? Next week is going to be a full, full jam packed week. First of all, my birthday is on Monday. I'm not super excited about my birthday because the season of my life, like where I am right now, this is a milestone birthday. I'm turning a number that ends in an O. <laughs> And I always imagined that when I reached this birthday that I would have a party and like celebrate. And because of the way my life is right now, it's just not possible. So unfortunately, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, I'm just kind of ho-hum about it. However, Meredith from Beetle On, who we, you guys know Meredith, um, she and I are very, very good friends. She's going to be in town. So she's taking me to dinner on Sunday night, which is going to be nice. And I'm sure we'll, we'll have pictures so you guys can see. We're going to eat sushi and, you know, just a little girl's night out with me and Meredith, which I need desperately. Um, and so that's that. <laughs> just going through the waves here. Tuesday... Now, I haven't confirmed yet. I haven't confirmed yet, but Sam and I were talking yesterday. And Sam remembers, you guys know Sam, remember Sam? Of course you do. So Sam from Sam's Bead Shop, he always sends me, right, the Sam's Bead Box for the month. I have it. And I'm actually going to use it on Saturday, okay? So backing up, we're still in the weekend. I'm kind of going backwards here. Saturday... We are going to use the bead box to create a piece of jewelry on the Sam's Bead Shop Facebook page. So don't forget about that. I've got one more class. I didn't do last weekend because I was sick, but I'm raring to go this week. And I'm using the bead box to create a piece of jewelry. That's Saturday night over on Sam's Bead Shop Facebook Live. Also, though... We're going to take a deep dive into the box of goodies on Tuesday's live here, and Sam's going to be here. Hooray! 
I love it when Sam's here. So I'm super excited. Sam's going to be here on Tuesday. As far as I know, that's what the schedule is. Unless he, he gets back to me and says he can't do it. I think Sam's going to be here on Tuesday and that's what we're going to do. But then it just keeps getting better. There's so much good stuff going on. On Thursday, Neela is going to be here. You guys, I've got two of the most handsome gentlemen in the industry in our Facebook Lives next week. How exciting is that? Two of the sweetest, most genuine, kind, amazingly creative people I know. And we get to have them all in the little, the little parentheses of one <laughs> I don't know I don't know I need to sit on my hands of one week right Neela is going to be here on Thursday of next week for our live and not only is Neela going to be here for Thursday but Neela's birthday is the day before mine so Neela's birthday is Sunday my birthday is Monday so in celebration of our July birthdays Neelay and I have a kit that is exclusive to you guys. So it's a silver silk kit. It has beautiful things in it and it will go on sale, not on Friday when the normal kits are on, but it'll go on sale on Thursdays and you guys will get to see it here first. So be excited about that. It's exciting. And then of course we have our regular feel good Friday after that. So next week is going to be super exciting. I cannot wait. I am really, really looking forward to it. It's going to be a busy week, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to um, definitely keep my mind off the fact that I'm not doing my regular birthday celebrating, which I really wanted to do. But you know what? I've got another celebration. I, I've got a, I've got a bigger date than a birthday coming up that I can celebrate, right? You guys know I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm in a season of waiting right now. And when that day comes, you can guarantee I'm going to have a huge celebration. So, oh, I almost forgot. How can I leave this part out? Kathy's coming to have lunch with me on my birthday. Well, I don't know if we're doing it on Monday. She's coming to have lunch with me at some point next week. I can't complain, guys. I can't complain. So, Anyway, um, let's see. So what else do we need to talk about? So those are all the exciting things, right? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, a couple of things I wanted to cover that are not necessarily exciting, but things that I still need to just kind of put out there. So first and foremost, I want to say this to all of you. I've said this before, but I want to say it again because I got a message from somebody that was upset with me and I don't like it when people are upset with me. So I want to put this out there one more time. Okay, please, you guys understand that I do not get every single message that you send me. I try. I try. I fail. <laughs> I am just a human and I am just one singular human. Okay. Messages come to the business page. Messages come to my email. Messages come to the, um, the text messaging app. Messages come to the Facebook just through my Facebook email messages come to me through regular text through Facebook Messenger. Did I say that one twice? You guys, <laughs> I get messages not all day every day. I don't want to make it sound like I'm just like super popular, but I get messages in a variety of places. It is very difficult for me to keep up with all of those messages. It's hard. And it is hard for me when I am the only person here most of the time, unless I have a team member here with me. I can actually say that now, which is amazing. Um, but for the most part, it's just me, right? I can't see every single message that goes by. In fact, if you message the Facebook page, the business page, you're going to get Kathy. Kathy's right there waiting to get your messages. So always assume that it isn't even me when you when you send messages there. If you send messages elsewhere, you guys, please. I am always talking about giving you guys grace. Give yourself grace. Please do the same for me in return and give me grace. I am not trying to be rude. I am not trying to ignore you. I am not trying to be snobby. I simply cannot make it to all of those places at once. 
I just can't. And if I miss your message or if you have a question and I don't see it, I, I apologize from the depths of my soul because you guys know deep down I am, well, not even just deep down, like even surface level, I am a good person and I genuinely care about every single one of you and I do not want any of you upset with me that I did not see your message and I did not respond, okay? Please understand that I do the best that I can, but I am just one person and you are 2,000. Yeah, we broke 2,000. I know I mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again because it's awesome. Our community page has broken the 2,000 mark. My YouTube channel has broken the 6,000 mark. So keep that in mind, right? We're dealing with 8,000 people and I'm just one person, okay? I love you. I love you so much and I want to talk to you, but I am just not, it's just not possible for me to be everywhere all at once, okay? So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Please don't be mad at me. <laughs> okay, the next thing I wanna say is this, and I hope nobody gets offended by this, but I'm gonna go ahead and say sorry, not sorry about this, okay? So just taking a quick little turn, then we will get to the project, and you can take a timestamp, grumpy pants on YouTube. Who needs to know? Um, so, Joni and Chachi, <laughs> Joan and Colleen and I were talking the other day when they were here about a comment that has happened here in the group and it has also happened over on Sam's group and I don't know if this person was genuinely asking this question or if they were just being snarky and being a troll and just trying to be whatever they're trying to be but the question was and it's come up more than once okay the question that comes in and I don't even know who it is but somebody that I don't recognize has asked and I know you guys have seen it is this a church group? Now, again, I don't know the context of this question. I don't know if they're being snarky. I don't know if it's because I have on tons of faith-based jewelry or what, what the reasoning is behind what their question is. But I'm going to address that right now and right here and get it out of the way so we can move on with our lives and make jewelry, okay? First of all, <laughs> first of all, no, we're not a church group. But number two, my faith is absolutely not a secret. It's not a secret, right? I don't make it a secret that I, I believe in God. That's not a secret. And not only that, but because I love jewelry so much, like that's my livelihood, right? Cooper is currently tearing apart a cardboard box, if you hear that noise. Um, but because I love jewelry so much and because I love God so much, right? I wear my faith literally in my jewelry. That's the power of jewelry, you guys. I don't wear it for you guys. I wear it for me because I'm going through a season in my life right now that is very hard. I'm struggling. I come here with a smile on my face and this is my, you know, this is my happy place. But I wear my jewelry as a constant reminder of me and my faith to stay strong through what I'm going through, right? So sorry if it offends you that I wear my faith-based jewelry, but not sorry because I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for that ever, right? That being said, we're not, we're not going to talk about God. Occasionally I mention God. I just can't help it, right? But we're not going to talk about God and have church here. We're making jewelry, people. <laughs> we're making jewelry. And though my faith is not a secret, those are two totally different things. Now, if you want to talk to me about God, we'll do that somewhere else. But for right here, me wearing my faith-based jewelry is, is it's, it's just one of the many ways that people express themselves through jewelry, which hallelujah makes jewelry amazing, right? Not only that, but I love everybody, right? If nothing else, let it be a symbol to you guys to know that I love everybody. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you're a Buddhist. I don't care what you are, right? I don't care because I love everybody and I'm an outlet of God's love for everybody. So yeah, just want you to know, Mr. Troll out there, if you don't like my crosses, don't look at them, right? We're making jewelry. Who cares, right? So... <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm on my soapbox today. Can you tell? <laughs> All right. Yes, Cooper is helping me unpack. He has found an empty Amazon box and he has decided that he's going to shred it because he knows mom can't stop him right now because she's busy with y'all. <laughs> All right. Oh gosh. Um, so. <sighs> Yeah, Sandra says, I'm a Christian and I think it's great. Exactly. I'm never going to apologize for my faith, but I'm also not going to cram it down your throat. And if you're offended by my jewelry, dude, <laughs> I 
thank you next <laughs> take several seats all right let's go let's talk about jewelry because that's why we're here so you guys we have been working on these goddess bracelets and you guys these have turned out to be everywhere right i showed you guys earlier in the week how to put together a um a goddess bracelet and I showed you the easy way and if you ask me the easy way is the most beautiful way I really like that style it's where we had two pieces of bead tree wire and we were threading our beads on and putting jump rings between them easy peasy right and the results are gorgeous well that kind of opened up a whole other world of these goddess bracelets in the past we've made these goddess bracelets with wire i don't know if you remember or not but you can go check on the youtube channel there is another way to make those where we actually did it with artistic wire okay well then somebody asked me a question about the three strand goddess bracelets and i thought okay great that's cool that's what i'm gonna do that's what we're gonna do on thursday so i went to youtube right because i don't know how to do that i went to youtube i looked it up i found a couple of different ways to do the three strand goddess bracelet and guys i still haven't figured it out i mean i my brain understands it and i see it and i i have, can see the steps but for whatever reason, my hands do not want to translate what I am seeing into the actual piece of jewelry. So for that reason, I'm not doing the three strand today, but I want you to know, those of you who are curious about it, I'm working on it. I'm working on it because I wanna be able to show that to you because it's super cool. It looks really awesome. Um, but for whatever reason, I'm really struggling with that one. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I got a little heated, didn't I? <laughs> Take a breath cool off okay so since i'm not doing the three strand goddess bracelet today i'm gonna do another two strand version of the goddess bracelet but this one we're doing with macrame and it's really easy macrame because we're using the tushy knots you guys remember the tushy knots i love the tushy knots so we're gonna use tushy knots and we're gonna make a, a bracelet on the tying station with some chinese knotting cord now before everybody asks before we do the chinese or before we get started somebody always wants to know can i use something other than chinese knotting cord yes you can what is chinese knotting cord it's just nylon cord and it's real thin um it comes you know in different in different sizes you can use any stringing material you want to to do this just so you know, I already said it. <laughs> okay. All right, friends, let's get down to business. I'm about to turn the fan up. <laughs> you guys in the comments are cracking me up. I love you so much. I just want you to know that. <laughs> oh, 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 whoops. I'm sorry. I turned you around again. Didn't mean to do that. You don't want to look at the ceiling. You want to look at my work mat. All right. So, whew. yes, yes, yes. All right, so for this project, you guys, I'm gonna calm down just a little bit. Beads and things. Colleen, you're awesome. All right, so you're gonna need some sort of cord, okay? Here's the thing. I didn't include in the materials list any of the measurements of the cord because it's really gonna kind of vary, but I can give you, Cooper, stop that. Now you're being a distraction. I can give you some secrets to the measurements of this, okay? So just hold still with this Cooper. That's enough. Mm, 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 that dog. Let me show you just a little sample here so you can kind of see where we're going with this, okay? So you can see this side's a little better. So it's not exactly the same. It doesn't, it still does that snaky thing, but it's not nearly as fluid as the one we did with the jump rings. However, the, the cord is really separating things out and making that chevron that the jump rings would be making, right? So that's why this is still considered, <laughs> that's why this is still considered a goddess, a goddess brace, bracelet. How big is the box Cooper is tearing up? It's pretty big. <laughs> He's going to be busy for a while. <laughs> um, as far as the beads are concerned, you can use any beads you want. Did you hear him huff at me? Oh my gosh, the sass. Sassy, sassy boy. So 
I use some faceted rondelles for this. You can use round beads for this. You can even use cube beads for this, honestly. It looks really kind of cool with, with cubes if you've never done it before. In fact, any of the goddess bracelets can be created using whatever kind of beads you want. Um, but this, this rondelle is what I'm using today and I mixed it with this purple. I don't know if it goes. I think it looks pretty. The beads are kind of a funny color, but they do have that flash of purple to them. So that's why I picked this cord. Um, but again, you can use any kind of cord that you want to use for this. And I left, I didn't tie a knot. You can use, um, you know, you can just do a loop here and do a button as your clasp if you want to. But I thought if we had time, I would do an adjustable um, macrame closure on this. So, all right. <laughs> He is sassy. I'm telling you, he is sassy. He's all types of sassy. Okay, so for the cord, you're going to need three pieces of cord for this. And like I said, I don't have exact measurements, but let me give you a little insight to the cording. Okay, so, oh gosh, I've created a knot. So two of the cords, you want two of the cords to be gosh, I don't know, 20 inches at the smallest amount, and you're going to have leftovers, right? So two of them need to be about 20 inches if you can stand to have cord that long, but get ready because the third cord needs to be three times the length of the other two. The reason is because one of the cords, the really long cord, is the knotting cord. The other two cords, they just hold our beads. So they don't actually do anything other than just hold the beads. But this middle cord, because you're making knots on both cords with the middle cord, it's got to be really, really long. So just to be safe, give yourself three times whatever your two outer cords are for your middle cord that you're going to do the knots with. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so you want to take your three cords and you want to bring them all together. Try to put that, the longest one in the middle because that's that's the one that's you're going to be using the most. I actually don't have mine in the middle. Let me fix that. Okay, now I'm going to use the tying station, but we're only going to attach one end to the tying station. Okay. And if you don't have a tying station, that's okay. Use some painter's tape and just tape your ends down. Now, because I want to do an adjustable clasp for this, I want you to leave yourself, if you wanna also do the adjustable clasp, I want you guys to leave yourself, let's see, what would that be? About five inches of cord, okay? So five inches of cord, then take all of those cords and tie an overhanded knot. That's going to signal the beginning of our bracelet, okay? Now, when I go to attach this to the tying station, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to loosen up this top plate here. I'm not gonna take it all the way off. I'm just gonna take my ends and slide them between the two acrylic plates, pull it right up to the knot that I've created here, and then I'm gonna tighten it back down, okay? Now, later we'll deal with these ends, but this is secure. And again, use tape, use a, you know, a, um, a clipboard, whatever you've got if you don't have a tying station. Okay, now let's talk about these tushy knots. <laughs> now we did these not too long ago, right? Our tushy knots are just a half hitch knot that goes over and under, right? And the reason that we call it that, it's actually a lark's head knot, right? Looks looks like a it because it is a lark's head knot. But the reason that we call it a tushy knot, other than the fact that it's just so darn cute, we can't stand it. Um, is it's two little legs or a little tushy, right? And the belt that's holding the pants on. That's, can you see it? If I turn it this way, you might be able to see it a little bit better. See it? Look, it's a little tushy. Little tushy or two little legs if, you, if you're offended by a tushy. And then the belt that is wrapping and holding those pants onto that cute little tushy. That's the knot that we're gonna use. For this project, we're going to be doing that knot in two different directions, though. If you'll notice, some of our knots are going this direction and some of them are going this direction, okay? So that's really the only only difference in our, our little knots than what we've done in the past, 
okay, is that we're not all going in the same direction. Some of them we're actually going to be doing backwards, but I'll walk you through it. It's no big deal, okay? No big deal. So in the first thing we're going to do, and I didn't do one on this one, but we are going to create a little knot right here, a little tushy knot, and I'll show you what that tushy knot looks like. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take our, let's see, I always forget which cord. It's going to be this one, okay? We're going to take our cord. If I mess this up, <laughs> we're going to take our outer right-hand cord, okay? That can't be right. That can't be right because this is the cord we need to knot over. All right, I got it. Sorry, took me just a second. Our right-handed cord, remember the only cord we knot with is the middle cord. That's where I was getting tripped up. Our right-handed cord doesn't have any beads on it yet, but it's going to. We're going to take our middle cord. That's the only one that we knot with. We're going to make a backwards P shape, right? Going across that outer right-hand cord, okay? We're going to take that cord, go behind the cord and up through that P shape that we made, right? And then we're going to pull. That's step one. We've made one leg, okay? Now we want to do the same thing, but this time, instead of going over the cord, we're going under the cord or behind the cord. So our P shape goes behind. We take our cord down through that P shape. It's backwards P shape. You know what I mean. And then pull, okay? Now you can see we've made ourselves our first little tushy knot. Those knots happen in two steps, right? Okay. Now, we're ready to add beads, and we're going to do beads one at a time with this, and I'm going to go slow in the beginning with all of our knots so you can see how we alternate back and forth. I'm going to pick up our left-handed cord. What size are the rondelles? Let me double check for you. So, the ones that I'm using are six by, is that six? Yeah, six by eight millimeters. But you can use whatever size you want to. You can use whatever, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be exactly the same. Okay, so this left-handed cord, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna thread on one of my beads. Okay, I'm gonna bring that bead all the way down. Okay, right there. Now, I'm gonna use my middle cord, because this is the only one that we make knots with. Okay, it's the only one that we make knots with. Now we're gonna do a tushy knot, and this time we're doing our P shape on the right-handed side. So this is actually the one that you learned how to do with me before. So we're taking that middle cord, we're making a P shape, okay? Janelda, if yours ended up on the inside, it's because you did it backwards. <laughs> Just undo it. You can do it the other way. I promise. I know. It's weird, but we're going to alternate. You'll see as we get going. Okay, so there's our P shape. It's going across our cord with our bead on it. Take that cord behind that cord and up through that P, okay, and pull. You're going to pull that cord right up next to the bead. Okay, now we want to repeat, but this time with our P shape, it goes behind the cord, okay? And now we take the long length, the working end, and go down through that P shape that we made, okay? And pull. That's going to lock that bead in place, okay? Now take your left-hand cord and kind of sit it out to the side. Now we're going to take our right-handed cord and we're going to thread on another bead. So this, this one goes a little bit slower than when we were just stringing with jump rings, right? But that's okay because, you know, not everything can be the same. <laughs> How boring would that be? All right, so we slide down another bead. It's going to sit kind of at an angle, right? You'll see in just a second. All this will start to make more sense, okay? But now... We're going to make our tushy knot right here on this, this right-handed cord. So that means our P shape is going to be backwards, right? Use the middle cord. Always the middle cord is your knotting cord, okay? Backwards P shape across the main cord. We go behind 
and up through, if I can grab it, okay, and pull. And then this time we're doing the same thing, but it goes behind the cord, right? Whoops. And then down through, okay? And when I pull this, I'll show you the difference between the two knots so you can see. Okay, so notice how one knot's going one direction and one knot's going the other direction. But both of them have their little legs. No, their legs are pointing to the outside and the, the belts are in the inside of the bracelet. Does that make sense? So they're going opposite directions. This one, the belt is in here. This one, the belt is in here, but the legs or the tushy are out facing the outside, right? Okay, so now we're gonna alternate, right? Your middle cord, always the, the cord you're gonna knot with. Take your left-handed cord, pick up another bead. Drop that down. And you can see where that's gonna lay, right? We're gonna take our middle cord that we're gonna knot with. We're making our P shape over the top of that cord behind and up through, pull. This time the P shape is behind the main cord and down through and pull. Okay, you can see it's starting to take shape. It's so exciting when it actually starts to look like a bracelet. <laughs> All right, reset, put that middle cord, make sure it's in the middle, pick up your, your opposite cord that's over here on the right. Add a bead. Drop that down. It fits right in that little space. Okay. Pick up your middle cord. We're making our P shape, which is more like a four, right? Because it's backwards of a P. <laughs> Over. Okay. And then you're going to go behind and up through Ooh, and pull. It's a lot of cord to pull. This time, when we make our little backwards P shape, it goes behind and down through. Now, the one thing I will say, if you're gonna use Chinese knotting cord, first of all, my Chinese knotting cord, I got it on Amazon and I got a whole bunch of colors for like $9. Second of all, it's real slippery. It doesn't have like, beetle has got a really nice nylon cord and it has like, it's kind of grippy on the outside. This that I bought is really slippery. And so my knots don't necessarily want to stay nice and tight. That's really the, the main drawback to this that I got on Amazon. But if you're looking for colors, that's definitely the way to go. Okay, now I'm going to go to the left side and pick up a bead. Drop it down. Okay, now we're gonna pick up our middle cord. That's always the cord we knot with. We're making our P shape going across that cord with the, the bead on it. And we're going behind and up through with our cord and pull. This time we're going behind that main cord and down through and pull, okay? All right, and we're ready to add another bead. So this is just more repetition, you guys. It's just repetition, and we'll get, we'll get going here. Now, it may be that your ends fray and you have a hard time getting them through the beads. If that happens, you can, you can melt, since this is nylon, you can melt your ends, which I may have to do with this one. Watch out, guys. I'm going to use fire. I'm not normally allowed to use flame in the house, but just get it kind of hot so you can melt it. And that helps. I didn't get enough on that one. Woo! <laughs> I hope that did it. Did it do it? No, come on. 
Now, 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 I know this fits through all of these beads. There we go. <laughs> patience, patience. Okay, dropping that bead down. Okay, now I'm gonna use my center cord again to do our knotting. And the knot is a four instead of a P or a backwards P, okay? And then we're going behind and up through that P shape and pull. This time we're going behind and down through and pull. And now we're ready to add another bead. So it takes a minute, right? It takes a little bit of time. You're doing one bead at a time, one set of knots at a time, but I feel like the results are so worth it. So we're just gonna stick with it. Yeah, I do need to cut it at an angle. And you can dip it in glue. Yeah, all of that works. I wish I had that at the moment. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be using flame in the house. <laughs> You guys know I, sh I shouldn't be allowed to use sharp objects or anything that with fire. <laughs> Why so mad? Somebody is just all types of grumpy today. Don't be grumpy. Goodness gracious. Do you need a hug? <laughs> I give you a hug. No grumpy faces are allowed here. This is jewelry making. <laughs> all right. Another one, okay. Threading on another bead, okay. I'm gonna drop that down, okay. Now, using that middle cord again, making our P shape. and up through, so we went over that main cord, now we're going up through our P-shape. Just remember, we've gotta alternate. Yeah, it's very similar to Kumihimo cord. In fact, I think that that's what most people use it for. It's very slippery though. Okay, now we're making that P-shape again. This time it goes behind, right? And then down through. Okay, now we're going to the other side. Someone has a finger close to the buttons, I imagine. So they could still use a hug though, right? <laughs> who doesn't love a hug? So, well, I, I take that back. I do have friends who do not like hugs and I have to remember that they don't. <laughs> I've got some people who are not huggers in my life. All right, so now we're making our P shape, okay? So in, and the P shape, when I'm working on the left-handed side, the P shape is always going in the right direction. When I'm working on the right, it's always a backwards P, if that helps, right? The difference between the Chinese knotting cord and the Eslon is the way that the cords are made. So I, I don't know the specifics, but the Eslon are, I'm sorry, this Chinese knotting cord is, is like, um, it's like a braid. It's like a tiny little braid. Do you see it? It's like a little tiny kumihimo braid, basically, that you oddly enough can use to do bigger kumihimo braids with. Whereas the S lawn, let me grab some real quick, just so I can show you the difference because it helps to see it visually. So S lawn, whoops, and B lawn, That I believe they're just twisted. Yeah, it's just two pieces of nylon cord that have been twisted, whereas this has been braided. So you can see. Do you see the difference? And the Eslon and Belon is, is a little bit thinner than what I'm using. What I'm using right here is a one millimeter Chinese knotting cord. It actually comes in a variety of sizes, um, but the one that I grabbed because I wanted to get it through, I wanted to, it to fit through as many beads as I could, was the one millimeter, and it fits through most things. All right, so because we're out here on the right-handed side, now remember our P shape is gonna be a backwards P shape, like I mentioned before. So pick up that middle cord and <clears throat> it makes more like a four, right? 
crossing over the top of the, the cord we're knotting on. And then you take the length of that and you go up through that P shape and pull, okay? And then you just repeat it, but you, you make it go behind the cord you're knotting on this time, right? And then you take the long length that, that you're working with, your working end, and you go down through the P shape and pull, okay? All right, now switching over again. I think the point eight would work. I don't know how much smaller that is, um, but I, I, I don't, I can't imagine that it wouldn't work. The B line and the S line are just really, really thin. And the problem with this, the super thin cords is that you don't see it as well. Colleen, I already answered that question. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I did answer that question though. I just showed it. That's okay. I know there's a delay. All right, so now I'm using my knotting cord over the left-handed cord, so our P shape is going in the right direction, right? That's kind of hard to see. And then <laughs> up through our P shape and pull. This time we're going behind and then down through and pull. Look how pretty. I love the look of this. I just think it's so cool. And I love the colored thread or the colored cord. I love it. I need more color in my life. And this purple is really pretty mixed with these beads. I wasn't so sure about it at first, but I really think that it brings out that kind of purple shimmer that's on those beads. All right, so a bead on the right. This time our P shape will be backwards, right? So it's more of a four across that center cord behind and up through and pull this time we go behind to make our four oops and then down through and pull okay alternating here so to the left pick up a bead Okay, now this time our P shape is in the actual direction of an actual P. Okay. And then behind and up through. I think what you're gonna find with this bracelet, once you, once you figure out the knot technique, you're gonna be good to go. The only challenge is just making sure that your knots are um, consistent in their, the tension that you have with them, right? In other words, you don't want this, this piece of the cord that is going across your bead, you don't want it to be droopy because it'll fall between the beads and you won't be able to see it. So that is just a matter of making sure that you use the same amount of tension on every, um, let's go ahead and trim this one like you guys suggested, shall we? Uh, using the same amount of tension every time. I don't know that that's gonna, now that I made that big kind of ball on the end with the, there we go, you guys see that? Oh gosh, my phone is, that's rude. My apologies, I thought I had the ringer turned off. That's just rude. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. All right, so thread a bead on, okay. Now, <laughs> I know Colleen, I'm just messing. We're just teasing you. <laughs> Pull. And then behind, oops, and then down through and pull. Okay. Next bead. Drop it down. Making our P shape going across, up through, pull behind, down through, and pull. I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little bit here because I've walked through these knots pretty slowly. We need to see if we can get through this because I want to show you how to finish this. 
So I really, really want to get, I really want to get all of this done. All right, so there's our P shape, our backwards P shape or our four. Behind, up through, pull. Behind, down through, whoops, down through and pull. I love knots. That's why I get so excited about these kinds of projects because I love macrame of any variety, any style. Um, and it's a very popular, it never goes out of style. It's really popular this year and it's perfect for summertime. And I really, you know what I would love to, I love the tying station. Do not get me wrong. It's a fantastic tool. But you know what Beetle On doesn't have, and I might have to just email Wyatt here in a minute when I get done, is Beetle On doesn't have a macrame board. You know, a self-healing mat, macrame mat that you can put your tea pins in. I wonder if they would let me design a macrame board for them. How cool would that be? They're always asking me if I have tool ideas. And I, I feel like, gosh, every tool has already been thought of, right? But now a beetle on self-healing mat that you can macrame on with the grid and the whole bit. I know other companies have them, but beetle on doesn't. And I work for them, so. <laughs> Just saying, you know. But I love it so much that I feel like they should have a macrame. They should have a macrame mat self-healing mat not just for macrame because they're good for all kinds of things right you can use them for all kinds of other things and I have one from another company but I refuse to use it because it's not a beetle on product you know I don't use it in my lives because I don't I don't want to advertise somebody else's we should have our own <laughs> Susie says good thinking Batman <laughs> I love that I love that Okay, so we're just going back and forth here. We're going to go a few more inches. And because we're going to do an adjustable closure on this, I only want to make my bracelet about six inches. So we've only got about two more inches of beads to go, which won't take us that long at all. And I'll show you how to make an adjustable clasp on this. Okay, so try to get a little bit, go a little bit faster. I say that, but then I don't. <laughs> Okay. Do you know where to get beeswax? Um, so I would, I, I want to say most, if you've got bead shops in your area, most everybody, most bead shops um, that carry seed beads and, and thread like Nymo have beeswax because it's a thread conditioner that a lot of people will use. Um, but I'm pretty sure Beadalon's got a little container of it. I know you can just get it on Amazon. It's not very expensive if you just need a little bit of it. Now, if you want to buy a lot of it, it's it can be very, very pricey. So it really kind of just depends on how much you need. But, um, you know, just to buy a little for thread conditioning and for your, your ends, I don't think it's very expensive. You can get it at a bead shop or Amazon for sure. Amazon has everything. Like that's always my go-to. If I can't find it or don't readily know where to get something, I just push it, put it into Amazon and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, Michael's, big box stores like that should have it. They should have it. And they'll have it where um, they're, they're beading thread, not cord, but their thread, like their Wildfire, Fireline, Nymo, those kinds of... Um, bead threads, the real thin threads, that's usually where you're going to find it. Oh, Myra says Joanne sells it in the sewing section. So there you go. I guess that makes sense too. Didn't even think about that. I don't sew, so. No, that doesn't mean I don't go over there to the fabric section and ooh and awe over things because you know I do and get fabric scraps. <laughs> Gotta have my scraps. 
Look at that. It's so pretty. I'm so pleased with this project. I'm so pleased with it. I wasn't 100% sold on it at first. You can see I only did a very small section that I could take a picture of for the event for Facebook. I wasn't real sure how the finished piece was going to turn out, but the more of it that I see, the more I really like it. I think that it's beautiful. Um, I think that so many color combinations are going to work. And I can't wait to see you guys make some of these. Now, that being said, just so you know, you can always make a really long one and turn it into a necklace. Or you can take these little short sections and make earrings out of them. You know, just a little drop. A little earring drop. Maybe even with your cord hanging at the bottom because it looks like a little, a little tassel. Put yourself an ear wire on there. I'm in love. I'm going to have to make a pair of earrings too. <laughs> I just talked myself into it. Ooh, ribbon. Oh my gosh, you guys are so awesome. I don't know if that was in reference to this, but you could totally use ribbon for this. Okay, just a few more sections of this and we'll take it off of the tying station and finish it off. Oops, oh, let me make a big mess here. That is not what I wanted. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> okay. Making our backwards P across, behind and up through. Pull. This time it goes behind and then down through. And pull. Suzanne, we'll miss you, but totally understand. You got the meat and potatoes. You can always come back and watch the way we finish it off if you want to later. No problems. We're glad you were here, though. Always happy when you guys are here. Otherwise, I'm just talking to myself, and that's not a whole lot of fun. But you know what? When I very first started doing Facebook Lives, I literally was talking to myself or maybe three people. <laughs> so, uh, we... We know I can. <laughs> I definitely can talk to myself and do. <laughs> All right. Got about one inch to go of the beads. Okay. And we'll tie another overhanded knot and then we'll take this off of the tying station and I'll either do the adjustable part just on the table here or I may reattach it to the tying. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but I will show you how to finish it. Okay. Ooh, yeah, you can make it a centerpiece. You could put other stuff on other sides. You know, you could make it like the center of a necklace. You guys always have the best ideas. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Could you use beading wire or artistic wire for this project? Okay, so yes, you can use artistic wire for this. Um, the only thing is that, remember that the artistic wire, we did it before we in a, um, a goddess style project. If you wanna look that up on YouTube to see, um, it takes a lot of force. <laughs> Uh, you really got to, you've really got to pull hard on the artistic wire to get it to make a knot. And a knot this small, it's never going to be this uniform. Um, so yes, you can do it. However, it will, um, it will be difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I... As far as like your wildfire is concerned, I, it's just so thin that you you will lose it between the beads. You, it will disappear between all those beads. All our pretty little 
chevron shapes here those will just disappear um, because the beads are just so much bigger than that kind of thread uh, but going back to the artistic wire you can make this style of bracelet um, with artistic wire and it's not this exact technique that's why if you want to look the one up on youtube that i did um you can see it is it's not a knotting technique it's actually just where we crisscross we take our wire and we crisscross between the beads um, and then we come from the bottom and go back up and it will it'll make the same shape and you don't have to create these little knots with your actual wire so yeah there's a ton of different ways to achieve this kind of goddess style that's what it's called i didn't name it that that's just what it's called um, but when you look up goddess style jewelry or goddess style bracelets you're gonna see there are so many different techniques this is just one of many um and this one is not as it's easy but i don't think any of them are as easy as the one we did on Tuesday. I don't think it gets any easier than the one we did on Tuesday. And quite honestly, as much as I love the way this looks, I feel like the one that we did on Tuesday is prettier. I just, I mean, that's just my opinion. Um, I feel like it was just an absolutely gorgeous finished piece. But they all have their own kind of personality for sure. I guess what I'm trying to say is there is a technique of this style bracelet for everybody and every uh every skill set all right so we're pretty close i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna do three more beads and then we're gonna we're gonna finish this off okay so okay with our last couple of sections here i'll slow back down again just for a refresher Okay, so our P shape goes over the cord that we're that has our bead. We go behind and up through our P shape. Same thing, but this time we go behind that cord and we go down through our P shape. Pull. Okay. We pick up the other side. Add. A bead okay now pick up our middle cord and our P shape is actually a P shape this time going over that center cord behind and up through pull behind the center cord and down through and pull all right we're gonna add one more bead okay Um, Maria, let me, I'll check here in just a second. Let me finish this knot and I'll tell you how many beads I used. And you may need to use a couple more or a couple less depending, but since we're going to make the clasp adjustable, it's really going to, um, make it so that a lot of different, a lot of different sizes can wear it. You know what? Let's add one more bead just for good measure. And then I'll count these. I promise. One more bead. I just want to, I want to finish over here on the left. I don't know why. <laughs> It's where we started. We started with a bead on the left. We're going to finish with a bead on the left. That's a weird little thing I need to do. I don't know why. All right. Okie dokie. There we go. So now let's count our beads. So we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 132, 33, 34, 35. So I used 35 and my bracelet is right at about six and a half inches. Okay. And that's without a clasp. All right. So I'm going to undo up here. Okay. And... I'm going to trim off some of this excess. We do have a lot of leftover cord, okay? So my measurements were probably way over what you actually need, but what you what what you need to know more than anything is that that middle cord needs to be way longer than your two outer cords, okay? All right. So now I'm going to take all my cords and why does it look so much cleaner down here? 
I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to tie an overhanded knot, stressing about these little things that do not make any difference whatsoever. I need to stop doing that. Okay. Pull that down nice and tight, and then I'm going to pull each individual cord just to tighten up my knot. Because again, this Chinese knotting cord is really slippery, so... Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out and I'm going to trim off so that they're the same on both sides. Okay. All right, so what we have is, look how pretty. Gosh, that's pretty. Okay, so let's talk about finishing this, this off. Now, I said at the beginning, if you had wanted to, you could have started with just a loop, right? Tied a loop in an overhanded knot. And then when you got down here to the end of your bracelet, you could tie on a button and that could be your closure. But for this one, we're gonna do an adjustable clasp. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our two ends, right? And we want to run one set one direction and one set the other direction. Okay, and bundle them in the middle. Okay, now we're going to do some square knots right here over all of these. So I'm going to take another piece, just a scrap piece that I cut off of our knotting cord. Okay, I'm going to take it behind all of these cords. Okay, now the first knot's always the trickiest when you're making a square knot. Okay, but it's the same technique as what we were doing. I'm making a P shape with my right-handed cord, right? Now I'm going to take my left-handed cord. Whoops, don't want to pull that, pull that P shape out. Taking the left-handed cord, making sure it's crossing over that right-handed cord. It's going to go behind all of this stuff and up through the P shape over here on the right. Okay, and then when I pull... We've got step one of a square knot. Now, a square knot happens in two steps, so we have to repeat that, and you do it opposite. So this time, we're starting on the left to make a backwards P shape. Take the right-handed cord, make sure it crosses over that. Then you're gonna go behind all of this and up through the P shape on the left and pull. And there is our first square knot, okay? Now, we're gonna do like maybe five or six of the, I don't know how many we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna do more. We're gonna do some more. We're gonna do a little section of square knots here and then I'll show you how that makes this adjustable, okay? So we're just gonna repeat our P shape over here with our right-handed cord, left-handed cord goes across that and up through you just got to be careful and not get all your cords. See, like I'm doing, I'm just, I'm making a mess. Okay, let's try again. It's easy to, to get your cords all confused here. Up through, pull. <laughs> okay, left side. Right cord goes over that, behind and up through, pull, I'm gonna go again, right side, P shape, left cord goes behind, don't get the cords mixed up, pull, okay, I'm go again, Left, cross, behind, and up through, pull. Right side, behind, up through, pull. Okay, so we're making a little, a little row of our square knots here. I'm gonna do a few more. <laughs> Go 
Colleen says, I need intensive, intensive lessons in the slidey magic. I love the slidey magic. And I love that you called it that. That is so awesome. Slidey magic is the best, particularly when you're making these kinds of bracelets and you've got, you're going to, you're going to sell them right to customers. You don't really know what size you're going to need, or what size customers are going to need. If you do an adjustable clasp, it really can accommodate so many different sizes of bracelet that, you know, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to worry that somebody is going to come and pick up your bracelet and try it on and go, oh, it doesn't fit. I wanted it. It's so pretty, but it doesn't fit, you know? All right, just a couple more, and then let's finish this so that you guys can see the finished results, okay? Do one more. Whoops. and pull. Okay, now let's talk about, now I could make more if I wanted to. Um, in fact, if I, if I were really, if I had the time and I didn't want to keep you guys here, you know, for if I didn't mind to keep you guys here forever, I'd probably double this just to make it a little bit bigger. Um, but what I've got here is fine. Now, what you want to do is, oh boy, we're going to use fire. <laughs> You can either take these two ends to the back, tie a knot, add some glue, or you can get dangerous. We're gonna trim off and trim off. I never do this, you guys. I never, ever do this. So because this stuff is made out of what it's made out of, we're gonna melt it down. So you just wanna get close with your heat, right? You don't wanna set it on fire. You know how many bracelets I've set on fire? Like, it's just not even funny. You want to melt it and then push it with your fingers into a little melted wad. Mine are a little long, so it's taken me a little, little extra time to melt this down. But you're going to melt it down right up against. See how I did that? Now, when you melt it, you're kind of making your own glue with it. Let's trim this one off just a little bit more. I just keep envisioning the bracelet going up in flames. I've done that. It's like, you know, it's like roasting marshmallows, right? Have you ever done that where you, you think you're just roasting and all of a sudden your entire marshmallow goes up in flames? That's, I'm having those flashbacks. Okay, so I took care of that, right? And I don't know if you guys can tell, but a lot of the jewelry that I have on at the moment is cord jewelry, and that's how the ends are finished. Now, if you don't trust that, you still can come in with a little drop of glue if you want to, but it's really not, it's not necessary. Now, here's the thing, though. It's adjustable because you've got these two ends, right, that you can pull to tighten or loosen, and it does take a minute to wiggle, right? you got to get it used to sliding, right? So you're going to pull it like that to close it up, or you'll pull it back out again, right? It's nice and strong. I like that. That's a good thing. But here's the thing. You don't want to leave your ends free, because if you leave your ends free, if you open this up too much, they can slide through and it come undone, right? Right? So what you want to do is you either want to put beads on the ends of your cords and tie little knots, or you just want to tie a knot, right? And you don't have to leave them this long if you don't want to. I kind of wonder what mine will look like if I add beads to each one of them. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add a bead, right, to one cord. I'm just going to tie an overhanded knot. It just adds extra dangles because you guys know what I love. I love the dangle. I got to have a dangle on a piece of jewelry. I don't know why. Just really, really enjoy extra movement and jewelry. Now that's going to hold that bead on. That's also going to be a stopper. That ser serves as a stopper so that my cord cannot slide all the way through. All right, so I'm going to put one on all of them. 
Come on, Mr. Cord. Sit there and bone in with a little bit bigger hole. Oh. Okay, overhanded knot. And I want to try to make it, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the other one, but try to make it in the same spot. Put another bead on. Tie another overhanded knot. This bracelet has turned out beautifully, you guys. Sometimes I make stuff and I'm like, oh, it's okay. Other times I surprise myself. I'm like, wow, that really looks good. I really like this bracelet. I really, really do. All right, there are my dangles on one side. I'm gonna do those over here on the other side as well. And we'll be done. And yes, you can use a cord burner, a wildfire burner, a thread burner. You can do that instead of a lighter. I just, um, I have real bad luck with the thread burners. I don't know why, but I break them. And it's not that I'm doing anything to them to break them. It just is a matter of if they end up in my hand, somehow, some way, I break them. <laughs> they just stop burning. I don't know why. last one. Now, because this Chinese knotting cord is very, very slippery, I probably will go behind all of my knots and add a little bit of glue to these. I'm not going to do it now, but I am going to do it just for extra security because it is slippery, slippery cord, which is a good thing when it comes to your sliding knot, right? You're, you, because you want it to very easily slide around and be adjustable for you, but I do worry about those knots. So I'll add a drop of glue, pretty little tiny drop of hypo cement to all of those. And I may add a drop to these big knots on the ends as well, but the rest of it I feel is nice and secure. How pretty is that? I love it. I love it. Lorena says, I will not give up. I am determined. You can do this. You've got this. You've so got this. I know you've got this. <laughs> Any of you can do this. I know you can. I know you can. We'll flip it around this way so you can see the little tushies. I see all the little tushies. There's a little tushy in a belt. A little tushy in a belt. And all of the little tushies are facing outwards. You can just look at it like they're, they're mooning everybody. <laughs> so there you go. All right, guys, I'm going to turn you guys around. Mm -mm -mm. Always have to take things to a weird place, don't I? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. That's just how I am. All right, so I'll give you a look at it this direction so you can see how pretty. So, so pretty. And I like it with the big beads. But here's the thing. You can do this with any size bead that you want to. You can do it with any shape bead that you want to. You don't have to use rondelles if you don't want to. Um, the most important thing, I think, is really kind of picking out a cord to do this with that is going to stand out against your beads. Just keep that in mind. The thinner the cord, the more it's going to get hidden and lost between the beads unless you use a bright pop of color. And then you'll be able to see it. So you just kind of have to find the balance there. But I think this turned out really well. I like the adjustability of it and I like the added beads all of my look at all the dangles I have on myself so I'm a fan of that if you're not a fan of this you can always cut these shorter just tie knots and be done with it or you can always go with the the loop and a button right that's going to save all of the um all the dangles it'll take all of that extra movement out however it doesn't make it adjustable so you do have to kind of think you know and weigh out your options there but there you go I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think it's very, very pretty. I'm going to see if my daughter will wear it. <laughs> if she won't, it's going in the Etsy shop. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been fun. I hope you have enjoyed this project. I hope that I broke it down in a way that you can understand and use in your own designs. If you do, uh, remake this, post it so we can see it. Maria says, what cord do you recommend? Well, for the one I was using today, or for the bracelet I made, I was using this Chinese knotting cord. I like it. It's nylon. It's just a little bit slippery, but it's inexpensive. And I got, I think I got 10 different colors for like $9 on Amazon. But you literally, 
really can use any cord that you want to with it. It's really up to you. Just the bigger the cord, the more cord you're going to see if that's, you know, that's the look you're going for. Uh, yeah, Wanda says the dangles are problematic when you're sitting on a keyboard all day. I totally understand that. So if the dangles are kind of out of your comfort zone and it bangs up against your work surface all day long, I'd go with the button for sure, just because it's easy. And you guys can always look up that part of a project because I use that quite frequently. So you can just look up some past projects to see the, um, the button and the loop. That's a super easy one to use for your, your closure. Um, yeah. That's it. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. You guys, uh, Wanda says, what is the status of Cooper's Amazon box? It has a whole corner missing. But when I fussed at him, he stopped. He is a sassy dog, but he listens. So I got to say, he's right here. Cooper, they want to say hi to you. You want to say hi? Do you want to say hi? Where's Cooper? He said hello. Oh my gosh. So there's Cooper. Okay, Cooper, you can go now. <laughs> Albert is here as well. Um, so don't forget, tomorrow is Feel Good Friday. It's my favorite day of the week. Come on, Albert. You can come up here too, baby. Come on. Um, Feel Good Friday is tomorrow. I will have instant gratification. This is Albert. Of instant gratification jewelry for you guys tomorrow. The kits will go into the shop for those about 10 minutes before we go live. And of course, I'll send out reminders for those. Don't forget. <laughs> and don't forget to set your reminders for my Saturday class with cooper just handed me his frisbee <laughs> my saturday class he wants you guys to see it um my saturday class with sam on sam's speed shop okay all right guys i look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow same time same place 1 p.m eastern time i'll see you there <laughs>